Depends on the listening. <laughs> Depends on the listening. Interesting. What do you mean? Uh, because sometimes the listening is ultra fast. And sometimes there is noise in the environment. Oh, okay. So it gets difficult. Yep. Very good. That's that's precisely the, the way, the thing I like to attack. Because, as you say, noise in the environment and speed can distract us from the main ideas. Definitely. And there is there is a, a, a lot of... Uh, a lot of, let's say, words that we usually ignore when when we are trying to understand things that go fast. You know what I mean? Yes. So we have to learn how to how to go slowly first in order to accelerate that process later. And one of the mechanics that I that I use a lot is understanding words literally. All right. Little little words can become paraphrasing later. I repeat, little words can become paraphrasing later. If we cannot do literal words, we will not be able to do paraphrasing later. So the answers, in, I'm going to make you a, a set of questions, which I cannot find. Ah, oh, here we are. Perfect. I want to make you a set of questions about the video, right? And then you need to answer with the literal information that is in the video, answer the questions, word by word, okay? That's why that's why the, the, the vocabulary that we had over there. So that's gonna be very interesting. Let's watch the video again so we can get more familiar with the information. Let's go over here. Um, here we go. Attention. This is the last photo taken by a group of experienced Russian hikers the night they disappeared in February 1959. Here in the remote Ural Mountains in Western Siberia, they were on an advanced winter hiking trip, trekking hundreds of kilometers through frozen wilderness. The photo shows them digging a platform in deep snow to pitch their tent along the slope of Kolatsiako, which translates from the language of the indigenous people of the region, the Mansi, to dead mountain. Hours later, the hikers abandoned the tent and all of their equipment in the dark. Weeks later, a search party found the tent, half destroyed and covered in snow. It had been cut open from the inside. Frozen bodies, most of them barefoot and wearing just their sleeping clothes, were found 1,500 meters away. Meaning something drove the group from the tent so fast there wasn't even time to unbutton its entrance or put on the heavy winter gear necessary to survive the conditions outside. It would take another two months to locate the rest of the group, all of them dead, their autopsies revealing severe internal injuries that were hard to explain. Dozens of theories, from alien encounters to government cover-ups, have developed ever since. But basically every theory tries to answer the same question. What made them leave their tent in the first place? The deeper you go into the Dyatlov Pass incident, named after the group's leader, 23-year-old Igor Dyatlov, the less things tend to add up. So for the sake of this video and explaining what potentially happened that night, Let's stick to the most basic facts. This is a rough diagram showing where the bodies of the nine hikers were found in relation to the abandoned tent. Stitched together from hand-drawn maps made during the initial investigation and from descriptions in the case files. The bodies were found in three groups. These six died of hypothermia, the rest from traumatic internal injuries. These two visuals will help piece together a picture of what happened to the group after they left the tent. 
The search party found footprints leading away from the tent that disappeared into the snow after about 500 meters. Continuing in their direction led to the discovery of the first two bodies under a cedar tree 1500 meters downslope from the tent. They were wearing almost nothing and had built a small fire. They froze to death. Three more were found after that in a straight line from the tree as if they were trying to make it back to the tent which in minus 30 degree temperatures and without proper clothes was basically impossible. They also froze to death. The last four weren't found until about two months later, buried under four meters of snow in a ravine. And this is where the investigation starts to get more confusing because unlike the rest of the group, three of them had experienced severe internal trauma. Dubinina and Zolotaryov had multiple broken ribs and Thibaut Brignol had a major skull fracture internal injuries that their autopsy reports determined were fatal. The investigation's forensic expert compared their injuries to the trauma that results from the shockwave of a bomb. But there was more. Zolotayev and Dubinina were missing their eyes, and Dubinina was missing her tongue. She, along with Kalevatov, were wearing clothes that were contaminated with excessive amounts of radioactive substances. In spite of many unanswered questions, the lead Soviet investigator, Lev Ivanov, closed the case on May 28, 1959. He concluded that no crime was committed, citing the hikers' lack of external injuries and that all of their valuables were intact, and that the cause of death was overwhelming force, which the hikers were not able to overcome. Since then, dozens of theories have attempted to explain what happened that night in 1959. Murder at the hands of the KGB, a Yeti attack, Soviet military experiments gone wrong, and, of course, UFOs. Most of these theories lack substantial evidence, and some of the more disturbing elements of the case aren't so mysterious after all. The missing soft tissue, Zolotaryov and Dubinina's eyes and Dubinina's tongue, for instance. Their bodies were found in a creek, and Dubinina in particular was found face down. The coroner concluded at the time that these were post-mortem changes due to natural decomposition after months of exposure to running water. But two theories in particular, each involving an overwhelming force, offer plausible solutions to the two most important questions of the case. What drove the hikers to abandon the tent the way they did? And what could have caused the tremendous internal injuries that some of them sustained? One of these theories has been considered and debunked for years, avalanche. Because this area isn't considered prone to avalanches, and the internal injuries don't match those typically found in avalanche victims, who mostly die from asphyxiation after being swept away by snow, this theory has often been disregarded. But a scientific paper published in January 2021 demonstrates that the hikers could have been hit by a very specific kind of avalanche. My name is John Gaume, and I'm a professor at uh, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, and I study snow avalanches. John Gaume and his colleague, geotechnical engineer Alexander Puzrin, developed a model that simulates a rare type of avalanche that could have impacted the tent, a delayed slab avalanche. The entire slab moves almost instantaneously. As it races down the slope, it breaks into large blocks. At its actual speed, it becomes evident why the wind slab is called the big killer. A slab avalanche occurs when a heavy concentration of snow forms on a less concentrated weak layer. And when the weak layer fails, this failure will propagate across the slope and eventually release a slab avalanche. In the Dyatlov case, the trigger for a slab avalanche would have been cutting the slope in order to pitch the tent. But whatever drove them down the mountain occurred hours after that. We believe that the strong winds brought some uh, additional snow on top of the tent, and this led to progressive accumulation and ultimately the failure of the weak layer and thus the avalanche, which impacted the tent and the uh, hikers. And we showed that this type of impact could explain the injuries of some of the hikers. Trapped under a heavy slab and potentially fearing a second avalanche, they cut their way out of the tent and made for the tree line for protection. This theory, constructed by data-driven simulations and models, shows that a delayed slab avalanche was possible in these conditions and could account for the traumatic injuries within the group, and doesn't attempt to explain anything beyond what drove them from the tent, like why the group was so underdressed. We say that this is possible that such a slab avalanche would have injured them the way they were injured, 
everything that happened after the avalanche is out of the scope of our paper. It's not difficult to die on Kolatsiakel, on, on the dead mountain. Richard Holmgren is a Swedish archaeologist who led an expedition that retraced the steps of the Dyatlov group in 2019. His group has a different explanation for how these injuries occurred. The goal was to go there exactly on the same time, and we wanted to put the tent there exactly the same night. We thought that this might help us to understand their situation. And after experiencing the severe weather of the region, his group came to one main conclusion. In my view, the catabatic scenario is the only theory that would explain all the steps. A catabatic wind is a powerful falling wind that travels down a mountain slope, quickly gaining speed under the force of gravity, and can create hurricane-like conditions without warning. In a catabatic scenario, it goes very fast from strong winds to uncontrollable strong winds. It can change dramatically in, in seconds. It doesn't take any time. If this scenario hit the Dyatlov hikers, the canvas tent would be at risk of being torn apart and would need to be evacuated immediately. It's a matter of seconds, so the natural procedure to do in this case would be to cut yourself out very quickly. And with temperatures around minus 30 degrees Celsius, their equipment would have been frozen stiff. I know myself uh, just putting on one boot in these circumstances takes three to four minutes, one boot. In the catabatic wind scenario, no one in the Dyatlov group is seriously injured at the tent and these hypothermia deaths are explained the same way. The injuries happen in the ravine where the bodies were found. Remember, these bodies were found buried under around four meters of snow. They may have dug themselves a snow den for shelter that collapsed and crushed them. The compressed chests were caused when the heavy snow collapsed over them, and it got heavier during the spring, during thawing. The injuries could even be post-mortem. By the time the bodies were found, they had been decomposing under a crushing snowpack for months. On a freezing cold night in February 1959, nine experienced hikers dug a platform into a slope to pitch their tent. Hours later, something happened that suddenly drove them into unsurvivable cold without proper clothes. A slab avalanche or catabatic wind are just two of many theories, and they actually have a lot of crossover. The slab avalanche theory needs catabatic wind to explain the snow transfer from the top of the slope. And the collapsed snow den in the catabatic theory is explained by a soft snow layer, the shelter they dug, buckling under a heavy slab. Both give compelling reasons for the Dyatlov group to abandon their tent and offer a plausible explanation for the mysterious injuries. Ultimately though, since there were no survivors, trying to account for why the hikers did the things they did ends up raising more questions than answers. This is one of the most uh, mysterious parts of the Jetlov Pass incident. The behavior of uh, the hikers uh, after the incident, after what happened during this night, is probably the thing that will never be explained. But that doesn't explain that What's the name of that? The radioactive substance. They never speak about that. Jesus Christ. Which is very interesting to me, you know? But anyway, so we have this video, okay? Using the vocabulary, I want you to tell me what else you understood the second time you saw this video. So help me, let's say, um, one of the people who saw this video first last week was Connie, for example. What else did you understand this time? Mm, that uh, the hikers abandoned the tent. Mm -hmm. And also that the autopsy rebels mm -hmm. that the Two of them had several injuries. Right. Mm, and they can uh, cannot explain mm -hmm. why they why they abandoned the tent in the first place. Do it. Yes. Yes, that's right. Using the expression that we have in the vocabulary. Yep. Yes. 
Very good. Very, very good. What about, for example, Luis? Alex, you saw the video too. Uh, what else did you understand this time? Um, uh, the man, many of the injuries uh, could be uh, uh, could be provoked. Provoked. Could be so, provoked. Hmm. Or or not provoked no. is, is when you, the, somebody somebody change your emotional yeah. reaction. The word is caused. Because 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 the tent is uh, ubicado, ubicado, no, uh, it's uh, local, localized, localized okay. in a slope and the, and I uh, understand that Avala Avalanche, right? Uh, slides, uh, and and uh, put pressure uh, mm -hmm. above uh, uh, about his his chest, uh, or and but and it was cause... more. Th there were more than one hiker. Did you say yeah. his they, chest? They're, 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 they're. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Their chest and, and cause the, the injury in their ribs, no? Good, 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 exactly. Is that, according to the video, is that the, the real reason or just a theory? Um, it's a, a theory, no? Okay, yes, yes, precisely. Uh -huh. Yeah, in the in later in the video, you're gonna hear why this is a theory. But yeah, that was that was the idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. Very, very nice. The compressed injuries, the compressed chests and everything. Good. Mm -hmm. Now for the, the rest of the you girls for it's for Sophie and for Fer. This is the first time you saw this video. Right? Tell me what you understood this time. Help me, uh, it's... Me? Yep. Mm -hmm. mm. Almost everything that my partner said. <laughs> Okay, uh, but what something else? Something about an accident in Siberia, I think. Good. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, um, an unexplicable accident, I think. Yes. And something about uh, a group of people in the mountains and something happened that nobody knows exactly what. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, they thought oh, the first theory is about the avalanche, mm -hmm. an avalanche that could be the reason of the death. Right. But then they discovered um, that the 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 house I don't know how the name bet bet I don't know the tent. The tent mm -hmm. was cut, and the bodies is was we the bodies, in, the bodies were excellent uh, founded with injuries. Wait, 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 what is the past of the word find? Found. Found, found. exactly. Uh -huh. Yes. The bodies were found in in strange ways. Good. Mm -hmm. Some, some were, some of them were uh, founded with hypothermia. Uh, were what again? Were, no, were fine. Fine, fast. Excellent. Were found with hypothermia. 
hypothermia and another with injuries in the chest and I don't remember the rest. Excellent. Good, 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 good. Okay, would you say, okay, uh, injuries in the chest, hypothermia, very good. And you really, you don't remember the other two? Something in the head, I, I, I don't know. Okay, okay. Well, that's enough, yeah. that's good. Yeah, they, they, they were found with, with strange injuries. Injuries that are not, not usual. Yeah. Right, so very good, very, very good. What about Fer? What did you understand? <clears throat> Uh, well, that this is still a mystery that hasn't been solved. Good. And we have like two theories that can explain some things that happen. For example, the injuries with the with the avalanche. They say that maybe the avalanche caused the injuries, but there are other things like you already said, like all the. Uh, uh, how do you say is the um, the uh, things with the the toxic things that they have in the body? Oh, the, uh, the radioactive, mm -hmm. the radioactive substances. It's radioactive, yes. Like nobody talks about that. Also, I think that uh, I don't know. Well, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know if a avalanche can cause like people lose their eyes and their sun. Exactly. I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Uh, I think my theory is that they have an avalanche and they have to run out of the tent. That's yeah. why they don't have all the clothes necessary. Okay. But something happened out there, like maybe some animal or maybe some scientific try to do some experiment. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But okay. I don't know. Something happened out there. <laughs> uh, Interesting. Yeah, and the other theory says something about the wind. That yes. It's like a, they, they, it can cause a, a tornado, a tornado. Mm -hmm. Tornado. Mm -hmm. And also, they also like uh, combine the, the two theories. Like they say that they have like a crossover with the two theories, that it was the avalanche and the wind that, got, that made all the injuries and make them like go out of the tent with Very good. nothing of the clouds. Mm -hmm. And what else? Mm, but I think at the end, nobody knows what happened. Exactly, that's and impossible. And we will never know, so. Mm -hmm. Especially especially with the behavior later mm -hmm. of the hikers, because yeah, when that, that's something that we were saying the first time, the when, when you are in a life death situation, your behavior can be erratic sometimes so that will be impossible but 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 it was interesting to me that you use the word crossover it, it was there were two theories one was the avalanche very good the second was the wind but what about the crossover between the both of them what happens if if if, if first there was an avalanche and then the wind no so that which is obviously Impossible to escape. Impossible to escape mm -hmm. to both. No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very interesting. Very interesting. Good. Good level of listening. Yeah. I'm. I'm surprised. Very nice. Let's see how you do in, on on literal words. But very good. Very very good. What about uh, Sophie? What did you understand? Mm, well, I understand almost everything that my classmates said mm -hmm. already, but I. I also understand that they just trying to explain the mystery with an as with an scientific uh, facts. Yes. So, but there is, I have a theory that maybe it could be uh, internal troubles between hikers. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know because all or someone. Um, yeah, internal problem because also they uh, at the first part of the video in the introduction, mm -hmm. they mentioned that cover up and the cover up is the the word that you use when the government is trying to cover to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to do something 
uh, to hide that to hide something to hide something that so maybe the two uh, explanations of the mystery are a scientific part because Definitely. also they use a, a papers but uh, the injuries also it's something that probably the, the other hikers didn't have sure so mm -hmm. why <laughs> and also the position of the bodies it's a I think that is another mystery, and of course, the radioactive suspects. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely, good, perfect. Yeah, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of going on in the in the video. the The introduction doesn't really doesn't really affects the discovery, the, the 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 scientific reasons and all the research that they explained, but it's it's. Yeah, precisely. They tell you that it's reason to under to to believe something that is not there. Something interesting to me that, for example, that you mentioned, guys, is that they never speak about animals. For example, it was very probable that the bodies were affected by an animal, but they they never speak about that, right? Which again, that doesn't explain. The, that can explain the missing eyeballs, they can explain the missing, the broken bones, but what about the radioactive substance? It's so weird. This case is so weird. But anyway, in front of you, you have four different questions. I have other four in my notes. And the idea is that you play the video again, right? And find this specific information in through the video. Right, you are going to use the vocabulary to get to know this information and answer the following questions. Okay, <clears throat> so the question number one says, How were the visuals about what happened that they created? According to the vocabulary, what is a visual? Who, who wants to tell me? According to the vocabulary, what is a visual? A picture. Mm -hmm. um, a picture map is a film, etc. Used to make an article or talk easier to understand or more interesting. Yep. When you want to understand, uh, uh, let's say, uh, data, right? About a uh, research of something, you will make a graph. Right? This graph is a visual. So there is a specific visual in the video that has a map about what happened that day, which is this one over here. All right? And then where the bodies were found, which is. Let me find the visual, this one over here. Over here, you can see the tent, you can see the footprints, you can see the, the positions of the bodies where they were found, etc. This is the visual that I am talking about. So question number one, how were the visuals about what happened that day? How were the visuals about what happened that day created? Okay. The new guys, please pay attention to the mechanic to see how we answer the question, okay? The guys that have been here, you're gonna help me and, uh, answer the question. Let's start with Connie. Connie, how were the visuals about what happened that day created? This information, you're gonna find it over here. Yes, they say something that they were created and uh, hand right good uh, uh, because they were uh, walking around the the area mm -hmm. and investigating investigating about the incident sounds good yes very good how right hand right is the verb transform this verb into a description and right 
handwriting? Handwriting, no, that's a that's a noun. Mm. When we transform verbs into descriptions, we use past participles or ing. Hand drawn. Excellent. They were hand drawn. Very good. Okay. Excellent. So one more time. They did all the all the visuals mm -hmm. hand drawn. Hand drawn. Mm -hmm. uh, with help of all the investigation that they did around the area. Good, 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 good. Do you remember what part of the video they said that? Yes, I think it's at the beginning because they talk about um, what happened, what happened that day. Good, very good. Let's listen to that section. Okay. The deeper you go into the Dyatlov Pass incident, named after the... So, for the sake of this video, this is a rough diagram showing where the bodies of the nine hikers were found in relation to the abandoned tent. Stitched together from hand-drawn maps made during the initial investigation and from descriptions in the case files. The body... That's the one. Okay? Okay. So my question is... What is this? Bodies, the initial relation. This is a rough diagram showing where the bodies of the nine hikers are. A rough, a rough diagram showing. A rough diagram, uh -huh. Where uh, the bodies were found. Mm -hmm. mm, and I don't know why, but I hear super low the audio of the video. Oh, really? That's my yes. microphone, probably. But I can put lower my, my volume. Mm, let's see if it's my volume, okay? I'm gonna do this, okay. This is a rough diagram showing where the bodies of the nine hikers were found in Yes, now it's better. Perfect, perfect. Um, All right, so what is this? This is a route diagram showing where the bodies were found. The bodies of who? Of the hikers. How many hikers were they? I don't remember. Let's see, again. Can I listen again? Sure, sure. This is a rough diagram showing where the bodies of the nine hikers were found in relation to the abandoned tent. Oh, this is a rough diagram showing where the bodies of the nine hikers were found in relation to the abandoned tent. Mm -hmm. in, relation, in relation to or in relation with? To, to the to. abandoned tent. Excellent. That's correct. In relation to is a correct uh, chunk, the, the the connector that corresponds to the word relation. Yes. Okay. Very good. Continue. Stitched together from hand drawn maps made during the initial investigation and from descriptions in the case files. I don't understand the first word. The first word together from hand drawn maps, maps during the initial investigation. There were hand drawn maps and something else. Let's listen again. Okay. The body during the initial relation to the abandoned tent. Stitched together from hand-drawn maps made during the initial investigation and from descriptions in the case files. Is stitched Good. together from uh, hand-drawn maps made, made. Uh -huh. during the initial investigation and from descriptions. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Description 
by the other people. I don't, I didn't catch the last part. Think about, um, think about the collocation again, the uh, word chunks. What is the, uh, what do you do with descriptions? Okay. We write them. Kinda. When you think about them, you similar to express descriptions. Investigation from and from. Mm, let's say find a relation here. If we okay. do homework, we make cakes. What do we do with descriptions? What do we do or do we make? Um, me? Yes, that's right. This is something they say. Listen again. Drawn maps made during the initial investigation and from descriptions in the case files. Oh, no, they never say make. But anyway, where were the descriptions? In the by case files. Exactly, in the case files. Very good. Very good. Okay, are you taking notes of the of all this? Mm, yes, but the, only a few words that I don't understand. I try to catch them in the second listening. By phonetic. <laughs> Not a problem. Yes. That is excellent. You're doing a great job. Let me get, help you with these mysterious words. If we go through the dictionary, let me let me include actually the words in the dictionary, in the in the vocabulary. Let's do come on, the Oxford dictionary. It's having technical problems. I uh, is in maintenance. Okay, okay, okay. So let's go to a different dictionary. Look at you when you express the, the mysterious word, you were right. Eh? I am impressed that you are associating uh, phonetics very well, very, very well. The word, the mysterious word is like this, stitch, like the monster on Lilo and Stitch, you know? Stitch. Yeah, and this you need to understand. How can I help you with this? You need to understand first the the noun probably, but not this stitch. <laughs> Stitches stitch together. Look at this, for example. This. When you are, you have two pieces of cloth here, right? Mm -hmm. And with the purple, with the purple uh, material, they are stitching both things together. Um, it's like kind of uh, like glue, but it's not glue, of course, because you don't you don't put any substance. You take it together. When you get a surgery, a medical surgery, and they open your body. Mm -hmm. At the end, they need to stitch it. So they say, hey, how many stitches did it need? Oh, they, they were talking about different people, the, the hand-drawn maps, and they uh -huh. stitched it. And they stitched together all the different explanations for all different people into one theory. Oh, got it. So definitely we need we definitely need this vocabulary in the in the screenshot that I sent you yesterday. Yes. Stitch together. Let me include that. Mm. Stitch is A regular verb. What is the passive stitch? 
Stitch it. Like uh, pronunciation. If the verb ends in ch. Stitch. We did. Stitched. Aha. Give me double double sound. Stitched. Stitched. Excellent. Stitched. Right? Let's Stitched. confirm that. Listen to this. Maps made during the initial investigation to the abandoned tent. Stitched together from hand drawn maps made during the initial investigation. Right? Yes. Perfect. So, this is a rough diagram showing where the bodies of the nine hikers were found in relation to the abandoned tent. Comma. Stitched mm -hmm. together from hand drawn maps mm -hmm. made during the initial investigation mm -hmm. and from decisions in case files. In which case files? In the case files. Yes, of course, and you are correct. This is the one, guys. This is a rough diagram showing where the bodies of the high nine hikers were found in relation to the abandoned tent. Stitched together from hand-drawn maps made during the initial investigation and from descriptions in the case files. This is the way they created the visuals that gives us reference on the case. And this is the correct answer. All right, guys, Jesus Christ, that was very, very hard, but very good. Very, very good. Okay, let's go to the next one, right? What did the search find? So I want you to explain in the first search, in the first exploration, what was the, the first findings of this? Okay, the answer to this is going to help me fit. Ready? Remember to take, to take yeah. notes about difficult words so you can give me the literal transcription. Okay. okay? Listen to this. And from descriptions in the case files. The bodies were found in three groups. These six died of hypothermia, the rest from traumatic internal injuries. These two visuals will help piece together a picture of what happened to the group after they left the tent. Okay, so what was found? They found the, uh, where the bodies were distributed in three groups. Good. So the first one was found in, uh, with hypo hypothermia. Good. Mm -hmm. And the second one with injuries. Good. Perfect. Perfect. So you are understanding the global idea. Going literal, let's check the word finding because you, you use the word finding in ING, but that's impossible because that's happening in this moment. Right? Yes. What is the past of find? Um, Excellent. Very good. When you say found, there are two options were found or found were found is passive voice and found is a normal verb in past which one did they use were found were found okay okay so who were found the bodies good exactly let's listen again and let's stitch everything together okay will help piece together a pit from found investigation and from descriptions in the case files. The bodies were found in three groups. These six died of hypothermia, the rest from traumatic internal injuries. Action. Okay, so the bodies were found uh, in two groups. 
the the six that they well the six these six ones uh die from hypothermia mm -hmm. and these three are from dramatic injuries nice from pronunciation for this word Your silence, I cannot hear you. Hypothermia. <laughs> good, 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 good. Here, thir. thir. It's a thermia or a thermia? Thir. The symbol over here is an er. Okay. Thermia. Okay, hypothermia. Very nice, very good. So now I have a question. Were they two groups or three groups? No, two groups. Two groups, right? Yes. All right. Let's listen again. Six case files. The bodies were found in three groups. These six died of hypothermia, the rest from traumatic internal injuries. Uh, three groups. Uh, th th these six ones were found, uh, died from hypothermia. Good. These three from uh, dramatic injuries. And I think that the other two were the ones with the eye, without the eyes and the sound. Exactly, the ones that were later, mm -hmm. right? So that's in the later audio, the stream from internal injuries. And we need to find the second part from the third group. Listen to this. These two visuals will help piece together a picture of what happened to the group after they left the tent. The search party found footprints leading away from the tent that disappeared into the snow after about 500 meters. Continuing in their direction led to the discovery of the first two bodies, under a cedar tree 1,500 meters downslope from the tent. They were wearing almost nothing and had built a small fire. They froze to death. Three more were found after that, in a straight line from the tree as if they were trying to make it back to the tent which in minus 30 degree temperatures and without proper clothes was basically impossible. They also froze to death. The last four weren't found until about two months later, buried under four meters of snow in a ravine. Here are the three groups. Okay, so I want you to find the most relevant information about the three findings. All the words that are not necessary, you can omit it, okay? Okay. So let's say the first two, what do you have? So the first two, uh, six were dying from hypothermia, mm -hmm. three from dramatic injury, mm -hmm. and the other three, mm -hmm. no, I already have the nine. Exactly. <laughs> Here are the nine years. Exactly. Okay. So, so I think four died from hypothermia. Correct. Correct. And then the other other four were found. Uh, can I watch it again? <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, of course. I just want you to make sure about something. The the information that you have, the numbers, you are correct. So okay. you don't need to move it. What is happening is we are getting confused on how we're found mm -hmm. versus what they died from. Yes. Technically, they died from two reasons, but that is not the same as saying where and how they were found. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So the yes. first information that we hear about the hypothermia and the internal injuries, how that is that? not relevant to the okay. story. Okay, 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 okay. Let's listen to that second part. Check this out. Three more were found nothing and had built 1,500 meters downslope from the first two after about 500 meters. Continuing in their direction led to the discovery of the first two bodies. Okay. So 500 meters away from the tent, they found the first two bodies. Very good. Pass to find? Found. Excellent. So again, 500 meters. 500 meters away from the tent, they found the first two bodies. Very good. 
second group. Under a cedar tree, 1500 meters downslope from the tent. They Watch out, it's not 500. Did you hear that? 1500. Excellent. 1500. Okay, that's a correction. Second part. They were wearing almost nothing and had built a small fire. They froze to death. Three more were found after that, in a straight line from the tree, as if they were trying to make it back to the tent. Okay, so three more were found, uh, like, they, like they were trying to get back to the tent in a line. Nice. Okay, that will be an interesting part. You use the word like. But mm. he didn't use the word like. Tell me another way to use to say like. Uh, you want to listen again? Sure, let's go. But after that, in a straight line for fire, down slope from the tent, they were wearing almost nothing and had built a small fire. They froze to death. Three more were found after that, in a straight line from the tree, as if they were trying to make it back to the tent. Okay, it's like they were found in a straight line. Like what? Uh, I know, I know, yeah, this one is, this one is hard. Because we, you are very familiar with the word like, and you're using like this and like that, but he never used the word like. If we're talking about a straight line, what? How can you how can you give me more reference to understand like how they, they were formed? Like they were uh, I'm using like again. Uh, were <sighs> forming I don't know how to say like formados, maybe? Uh, uh, getting in line, but that mm -hmm. is, is straight it's line. Same. <laughs> it's the same. Uh -huh. But anyway, you're using like, let's listen again, or, or let's use uh, the, um, the knowledge, because you know this word. You know this word. What is the connector similar to like that we confuse a lot with what like when you talk about similarities? Let's say, for example, I am space. Tall space, my dad. I have the same height as my dad. Similar? Similar, no, but you need to complete the sentence. I am space, tall space, my dad. Mm -mm. We need help with this one. Yes. Okay, no problem. Guys, can you help Fer? As tall as. Excellent girls, very good. Excellent, Connie, excellent needs. As tall as my dad. So we are in the same height. I, I, I know that you know this word. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. definitely you know this word. But when we are thinking kind of in paraphrasing, we forget this word because we have the comfort of like. Mm -hmm. Right? Alternating from like and as in certain situations can help you a lot with a certificate. Okay. A lot, a lot, a lot. So again, three more were found after that in a straight line. Mm -hmm. As. As. They were. Doing something. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, as they were returning to the tent. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Very good. Yes, of course. We are going to play the video again. Let me just take uh, attendance. I come back with you in a moment. Okay. Jesse, hello. Good morning, girl. Hi. Good morning. Hello. Let's go, girl. Yes, I go. So we're going to pay attendance, please? Yes, please. Connie? I'm here. Good morning. Good morning, Connie. Thank you. It's it? Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Luis Alejandro. Here, good morning. 
Good morning, Liz. Thank you. Fer. Here. Good morning. Good morning, Fer. Thank you. Sophie. Good morning, Lily. Good morning, Sophie. Thank you. So that's all. And that's all. Chucho is not here. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, Israel is not here. All right. Thank you. Good yes, day. of course. See you later. Mm -hmm. Bye. All right. Listen carefully and check the connectors that we are using you with us. Okay. Let's go. Which in minus 30 degree temperatures and without proper clothes was basically impossible. They also froze to death. The last four, three more were found after that in a straight line from the tree as if they were trying to make it back to the tent. As if they were trying to get back to the tent. Nice, 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 nice. They never say get, but as if is as correct. If. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. As if this is a, a common a common chunk that is used when you are supposing what happened. As if. You know? So take that as an as like a new vocabulary. Every time you are supposing what happens, you use as if. Okay? And okay. eliminate get back. There is an idiomatic way to use the word. I don't want to give you the answer, but it's a common verb. Or do you know another way to say arrive? Arrive? Uh -huh. That it's not get? That it's not get. Uh -huh. um, it could be come back. Kinda, kinda. Return. Probably when you have seen this expression in movies, somebody arrived to, to, to the host's house and they say, hello, please come in. I am so glad that you came. Similar to came. <laughs> yes. That you are here. <laughs> that you are here. <laughs> yes, it's difficult. I know, I know, I know. It's difficult. Okay, let's listen to that and let's see if you can find it. And after that, in a straight line from the tree, as if they were trying to make it back to the tent. As if they were trying to make it back to the tent. Aha, make it. Make it back to the tent. Guys, take notes about this. In order to expand your vocabulary, the first word that we um, learn is return. Or probably get back because of the the Beatles song. Then after we understand get back, we understand return. That's probably level A1, A2. Then in B1, we get uh, phrasal verbs and we have going back, come back and, and get back again. Similar to all this, we have the verb make. Make, but in the Phrases, um, create, produce, cost to die, for someone there, give, reach place, 11. To reach a particular place, especially so that they are, this is time to do something. At this rate, we won't make New York before midnight. Let's say that your airplane is delayed, right? And this person won't make New York. Similar to say, this person won't arrive to New York before midnight. Right? That's the idiomatic, that's a vocabulary expansion. The last part fair, so you finish. Which in minus 30 degree temperatures and without proper clothes was basically impossible. They also froze to death. The last four weren't found until about two months later, buried under four meters. The other four, one was found under four, yeah, one was found two months later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eliminate one. They were found at the same time. 
the, the um, other four? Were found two months later. Yes, months later. The idea is that but they use more information. Check this out. Here's a the last four weren't found until about two months later. One found. Uh, I, I don't understand that work. That's work. Yeah, that part is, is hard. They. I, I, I'm listening. One found. Uh -huh. work two months later. Good. Good, good, good. Okay. But, Mm, it's one sounds similar to one, but it's not one. What is the verb be in past for the four bodies? Where? Where. Very good. That's super important. Where sounds similar to one. Uh, so okay. phonetically, it's tricky. The word is were. Okay. But there is a, a tiny, tiny detail here. Mm -hmm. Depends on the next word, the, the, precisely the mysterious word. This is a time expression, and we use it when we want to, to speak about limits. For example, let's talk about the limit of... Um, let's say, I cannot play video games, cannot, negative. I cannot play video games before I finish my homework. Okay? Give me a, a time expression to substitute the word before. I cannot I, play video games. Uh -huh. I cannot play video games before I finish my homework. If I don't finish my homework? If I can be, but that doesn't give me like mm. sequence. Sequence of events. Unless? Unless, similar to unless. Very similar to unless. Mm. Actually, we, this is interesting. With unless, I need a negative idea. Unless I don't. Okay. So you need a positive idea, okay. unless I finish. Uh, I cannot play video games until. That's a mysterious word. Listen to okay. this. Barry also froze to death. The last four weren't found until about two months later. The last four were found until two months later. I exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until two months later. And he says until about. Until about, about two months later. Mm -hmm. okay. In this context, about is for approximately. Mm -hmm. Question. If you say until, how do you use weren't or where? Positive or negative? Positive. Wrong. Negative. Negative? Yeah. Uh -huh. that's, that's a grammatical issue. I cannot play video games until I finish my homework. Because when, switch, when I finish my homework, I... I can't play video games. Exactly. This is a note for everybody, guys. Until versus when. When is the consequence. Uh -huh. Similar to if. If I finish my homework, consequence, I can play video games. But when I collocate until, one of them becomes negative because until is a limit. I cannot play video games until I finish my homework. Understand this situation every time you use until, guys. This is a, another very, very important note for a certificate paper. Okay, until uses a negative Contrast or where one negative, one positive. No, the idea is that they contrast each other. And Fer, you are finished. 
very good. Look at this. What did the search find? 500 meters away from the tent, they found the first two bodies. Three more were found after that in a straight line as if they were trying to make it back to the tent. Make it. The last four weren't negative. Weren't found until about two months later. Those were the mysterious words. Any question? No. Yes, I have a question. Excellent. Goes off. Tell me. I would say that the, the best the best synonym or the or the easy synonym is arrive. Arrive. Let's say for example when somebody cancels plans because I they they, they are in traffic. You know what? I won't be able to arrive. Right? I won't be able to to make it incomplete. Make it. To make it. Aha. Okay. Right? And you can also use it in past. We arrived late to the movie. We And the incomplete we made it. part? Exactly. We made it late to the movie. Okay. So it is like a phrasal verb. You need it. Yes, but phrasal verbs don't use pronouns. No, this is not a phrasal verb. It's more like a... It's, let's say it's an advanced definition for make. Okay. Uh -huh. An advanced definition for make. The, the the easy definition is arrive. And the difficult definition is make. Mm -hmm. And the reason you need sorry, the reason you need it is because of the grammatical uh, rule. You cannot have only make without anything else. Imagine I tell you I make. What do you make? You know? That's why it's necessary to eat. Not because it's a phrasal verb, but because it is it is necessary for the verb. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second question. <laughs> yes. And uh, it's also about vocabulary. Speech. speech. Yes. You, you use speech with together or with or not? Excellent question. In this context, in this context, in the context of like connecting stuff, ideas, for example, when you don't know what is happening in the in the mystery, but you connect one thing with another, this is when you say stick together, okay. right? But when you say, let's imagine after an injury, you go to for example, my, my sister cut her hand and she went to emergencies, right? They needed to stitch her hand. Okay. Listen to how, in this case, I am not using together. Mm -hmm. You see? Of course, you don't use it together because you are not connecting things. You are only speaking about the process, the procedure. Very good question. Excellent question. Who else? More questions? Come on, guys. Give me a challenge. 
Yeah, I have one question. All right, let's go. Uh, make it, uh, the, the word make it, uh, it's like a casual form? Uh -huh. Definitely. Okay, so if, if in the certification, in the writing, it will be better if I write a write than make it? Oh, okay, which is informal versus formal? Mm, yes. Mm, not really. Well, it depends. If you're talking about a TOEFL, if you're talking about a TOEFL, it's better to use make it because TOEFL mm -hmm. should be, TOEFL is, is a, a directed towards not informal speech, but native. You okay. know, and mm -hmm. arrive is a literal uh, translation from Spanish to English. Mm -hmm. So the farther you are from the translation, the better your score is going to be. Okay. So I really recommend for TOEFL to not use cognates. What are cognates? Words that sound similar to Spanish, like important. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of important, use relevant. Instead of arrive, use make, make it. Uh -huh. And uh, words that are not similar to your mother language, that are more and more like native, that's going to help you a thousand. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Very good question. Very, very good question. All right, what time is it? Do we have time for another? Yes, of course. So the next person is going to tell me. What is a delayed slab avalanche? Okay, help me. Alex, are you ready, man? Yes. <clears throat> Let's go. Let's do this. Buried under four meters of snow because Nina, your skull, the investigate bomb was missing. It was of death. A side two were running while for players to abandon the tent the way they did. Avalanche. Because this area isn't considered prone to avalanches, and the internal injuries don't match those typically found in avalanche victims, who mostly die from asphyxiation after being swept away by snow, this theory has often been disregarded. But a scientific paper published in January 2021 demonstrates that the hikers could have been hit by a very specific kind of avalanche. My name is John Gom, and I'm a professor at uh, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, and I study snow avalanches. John Gom and his colleague, geotechnical engineer Alexander Puzrin, developed a model that simulates a rare type of avalanche that could have impacted the tent, a delayed slab avalanche. The entire slab moves almost instantaneously. As it races down the slope, it breaks into large blocks. At its actual speed, it becomes evident why the wind slab is called the big killer. A slab avalanche occurs when a heavy concentration of snow forms on a less concentrated weak layer. And when the weak layer fails, this failure will propagate across the slope and eventually release a slab avalanche. In the All right, that's the one. That's the practice. What information do you have? Case, the trigger for a slab avalanche Oops. Tell me, Alex. Are you there? Hello? Okay, right. Okay, perfect. So what information do you have? The slab avalanche, it's a heavy uh, concentrate, no concentration. Excellent, good. Of snow. Mm -hmm. That's information you have, right? Yes. Okay, let's go back and let's listen to it again concentrated which occurs why the wind concentration of snow form a slab avalanche occurs when a heavy concentration of snow forms on a less concentrated weak layer
What do you have? Uh, Slav Avalanche. Mm -hmm. uh, is Slav Avalanche. Occurs when a heavy concentration of snow. Exactly. Very good. When a heavy concentration of snow suspends your points. No? Yes. Good. Good, 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 good. Once again. Uh, occur but it's why the wind slab is called the big killer. A slab avalanche occurs when a heavy concentration of snow forms on a less concentrated weak layer. I love avalanche. It is when a heavy concentration of snow forms. Uh, can I listen again the the last five seconds? Yes, of course occurs when a heavy concentration of snow forms on a less concentrated weak layer. Forms uh, a less concentration. Concentrated concentration. Concentrated. That's a good question. No. That, how, that's a very, very excellent, excellent uh, problem because you can train yourself to identify what type of word you need. Concentration is a concept, is a noun. Concentrated mm -hmm. is a description. A noun is the, the concept that we are talking about, and concentrated needs additional information. You know? Okay. Is the word the final word, or is there more information after it? No, it's uh, there are more information. There is more there information. Is, is mm -hmm. For that reason, it's very probable that you are facing Just, a description. Uh, this, okay. You see, because you have more words after it, and there are no connectors. Okay. You see, let's listen again. When a heavy concentration of snow forms on a less concentrated weak layer. Forms mm, mm, mm. of a less concentration, concentrated. Aha, uh -huh. that's correct. Weak or no. So the phonetics are tricking you, no? You don't, yes. you cannot find the word. What is the yeah. opposite of strong? Weak. Weak, very good. And what is the name of things that cover cover in themselves? For example, on a sandwich, you have the bread, and then you have the ham, and you have the vegetables. This is every uh, cat. No. Ah, uh, you're thinking in Spanish. Mm. Yes. Yes. You're probably you probably know this word. But let me check. Transition. Layer. Uh -uh. Look at this. Layer. Second. Layer. The second sound is not E. Layer. Layer. Okay. Uh -huh. Layer. Layer. Okay. Are you familiar with this word? No, I don't know. What what is the meaning of this word? Okay. An amount of yeah, read it, read it, go. Yeah, an amount or sheet of a system that covers a, a surface. Okay. Mm -hmm. Usually between two things, like a sandwich, okay. layer, a layer of this, a layer of that, a layer of that. When you are painting your house, you cover the first layer is a primer. Okay. Then after the the primer layer, you get the first layer, then the second layer, then the set, the third layer. Okay. 
that is the one ozone layer and in this case snow and when layer snow ah. layer. <laughs> it's, it's there <laughs> yes <laughs> it's in front of you okay. it's visual <laughs> yes. okay complete idea what is this lab avalanche uh, 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 um or when does a slab avalanche occur? Occurs when a heavy concentration of snow forms a less concentrated weak layer. Mm -hmm. Again, again, forms where? From, forms a less concentrated weak la layer. Mm -hmm. Connect where, where? What in relation to the less concentrated weak layer? Where is this, the heavy concentration yeah. of snow? Uh, I love this avalanche. <clears throat> now, my question is where? Where does it form? Of a snow, of snow forms on a less concentrated. Exactly. What is the answer layer. to the question? No, no, no. What is the answer to the question where? On, over. On. Okay, on. Exactly, that was a missing word. Okay. Complete idea. A uh, slab avalanche occurs when a heavy concentration of snow forms on a less concentrated weak layer. That is correct, brother. Very good. Okay. Very, very good. Player fails. This failure will... Right? There is more additional information, but we are not going to focus on him because he has a Russian accent, Okay. right? Anyway, this is the one problem where layer was new, but here you have. Excellent job, brother. Excellent job, everyone. Very good listening practice. Okay, if you want to practice more, you can practice on number four and send it to me via WhatsApp. And I'm gonna include some other questions for the next video. In this moment, we can close the lesson and tomorrow we start with the next topic. All right? On Thursday. On Thursday, yeah, because tomorrow is official. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Do you, do you celebrate the, the Day of the Death? Do you put your, your yes. altar and everything? Yes. Yes. Very nice, guys. Very, very nice. Well, you should. You should take your family, speak with your family, like have yourself a nice day, and I'll see you on Thursday. Perfect. Thank you. Have you a nice too. day on Thursday. Have a nice day, guys. Bye. See you later. Goodbye. Bye bye.